One of the fastest growing trends among filmmakers and content creators on YouTube has to be camera movement. But did you know, there are actually quite a few different types of camera movements in the cinematic world that are worth considering. But how do you decide which one? It really all depends on the story you're trying to tell. In this episode of Visual Storytelling, we're going to explain and demonstrate six types of camera movement. We'll also talk about the gear required to perform each camera move. Disclaimer, I know some of these are a little basic, but for anyone just starting out, these are important to know and understand. Once your camera is locked off on sticks, the panning movement is simple. You aim the camera left to right or right to left, typically motivated by the reveal of a subject or an object. or perhaps following a moving subject. It really depends on the scene within your story. The gear that you will require is very basic and singular, tripod. Same goes for the tilt. For this move, your camera is still locked off on your sticks, but the camera now is aiming up or down to reveal a subject or object that is, once again, important to your story. Tripods are your best friend, and too many times amateur filmmakers or videographers go handheld with no story or character motivation, and so therefore we're forced to watch shaky footage for no reason. When in doubt, lock off your shot in a tripod and your viewers will thank you for it. This is an old camera move made famous in the late 60s, early 70s, when zoom lenses became available for cinema, i.e. The Graduate, circa 1967. It is a unique way to isolate a subject by compressing space by zooming in or to reveal a location that your subject occupies by zooming out. It is probably more well known these days thanks to TV shows like NBC's The Office, most viewed show on Netflix, where they use zoom lenses quite a bit for comedic effect. Yes, Matt? Somebody wrote a nasty comment about Jake. Okay. We should delete it. Why? They insulted our boss, your boss. It's making us look bad. What did it say? This guy is an idiot. It's just telling it like it is. I kind of respect that. How dare you? Jake has more talent in his pinky than you have in your whole- How's the video doing? <laughs> Oh, hey, you're here. <laughs> what is he doing? Somebody called you an idiot online. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. An idiot? Come on, get out of the way. Out of the way, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> I can't see what this guy has to say here. Okay. Um, just um, get back to work, please. Thank you. No, it's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. Oh, I wrote the comment. Any zoom lens will do the trick. However, a cine zoom with a zoom rocker would yield the smoothest results, but those can be a lot of cash. An affordable camcorder with built-in zoom lens is a great alternative. And there are plenty of affordable cameras like that to choose from out there. In fact, that's what we use to shoot our scene. This is when the camera itself physically moves left to right or right to left in the smoothest way possible. This is considered a really high-end move, typically done using a dolly track. Now we don't really have access to one of those, but the same effect can be achieved using a really nice slider. The slider can easily be placed on the floor or the ground if you desire a low angle shot. If you don't want a low angle, you can mount the slider to a sturdy tripod. But for the best results, you should mount the slider using two tripods, one on each end. Sliders come in different lengths, and quality can vary between manufacturers, so be mindful of the user reviews. A good metric is the weight capacity of the slider. Find out how much your slider rig will weigh, and then use that as a guide for your slider purchase.
No, 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 not, not, not that green. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Not, not that green. This crane, where the camera itself physically moves up or down to show off the depth of your composition. This is also a high-end camera move, typically done using a techno crane, but we don't have one of those either. But that's fine, because all you really need is a jib. Once you have the jib, get yourself a sturdy tripod to mount the jib onto. Then place the camera onto the ball head, which is found on one end of the jib, while you place counterweights on the other end of the jib. Then carefully move the crane up or down, depending on the shot you want. This is a very cinematic way to reveal someone walking in or out of a building. the camera itself physically moves forward or backward in space to reveal information or to focus your attention onto the subject by eliminating excess space around it. This can be achieved in multiple ways. A dolly track or slider could accomplish this camera move, but dolly tracks are expensive and sliders can only go so far. Therefore, a great alternative, which is enormously popular for obvious reasons, is the gimbal. A properly stabilized gimbal will perform a dolly shot or even a tracking shot impeccably well. Balancing a gimbal can be taxing, but once it's properly balanced, you will have yourself a floating camera to perform glorious dolly shots with ease. Bear in mind, however, balancing takes time and they're even harder to focus sometimes. As a result, your gimbal operator will inevitably become fatigued, as gimbals are not easy to carry around because they're designed to be held up by your forearms. But if you have the money to spend, you can remedy that by equipping something like an easy rig to relieve the weight. Gimbals are really ideal for well thought out shots that require short takes and have been properly rehearsed. Okay, so this isn't really a movement, but rather a style. Describing something as handheld camera movement would really only apply if the camera person was walking or running while handheld. Handheld is a great way to convey chaos and uncertainty in a scene or to visually express the emotional fear your character is experiencing. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go out there and use every single one of these moves in your next short film or YouTube video, but it is important to understand the types of camera movements that have been around since the dawn of filmmaking. Think and plan your shots beforehand so you can make intentional, creative choices on set and not fumble around in the edit trying to make a story out of shaky slow motion b-roll. Instead, plan your story out and then make choices that serve your story. Now go out there and make a film or a YouTube video. Right, right, right. Oh, I wrote the comment. <laughs> All right, one more like that, they were good. Okay. Oh, I wrote the comment. <laughs>